What is it about Bad Bunny that is getting people from all over Texas to come walk through the doors at the Alamo Dome today? I think he is just revolutionary in reggaeton. He's smashing machismo. He's like smashing like all Latino stereotypes and you just have to stand 100%. The Puerto Rican music scene has been on high demand over the years, with many of its artists making it to the top of the charts. But one in particular stands out among all other, and he's known as Bad Bunny, who has a remarkable rise to fame and is now one of the most well-known artists in the mainstream music industry. Benito Antonio Martinez Ocasio was born in 1994 in Puerto Rico, in a town called Vega Baja. The city borders with the Atlantic Ocean and is known for having some of the most attractive and beautiful beaches. It is also considered as the city of Melo Melo, meaning sugarcane, due to its history of activities in sugarcane plantation. Speaking of his background, Benito was born to a middle class family whose father was a truck driver and his mother was a school teacher. He was the eldest son among his two siblings. Growing up, he was shy and was not like other kids, where instead of going out and playing with his friends or being in the streets, he would rather stay at home and spend time with his family. It is said that most of his close friends were his own family members, who he enjoyed the company of. In Vega Baja, there was little musical influence, as not many of the genre's artists were produced from the city as compared to other Puerto Rican cities. But most of his influence developed from singing at church on a weekly basis where he sang until the age of 13. He would attend church weekly with his mother as he was a devoted Catholic. This is where he got a chance to explore his singing abilities. But then again, his real influence started when he first heard mainstream musicians such as Daddy Yankee as well as Vito C, who were performing a combination of hip hop and reggae, which fascinated Benito. Using this influence, he would start freestyle raps during school where he got mostly cheers and appreciation from all his classmates. This motivated him to make up his mind and pursue a career as a professional musician, where he had more success to come. After school, he decided to study audiovisual communication at the University of Puerto Rico, which gave him the necessary skills for recording audio, songs, film strips, and other forms of multimedia presentation, even though his father wanted him to be an engineer. But Benito was passionate about his musical career so much that he had started working in a grocery store called the Econo Supermarket just to pay for his audiovisual course fees and so that he could maintain his work study balance. De trabajar en supermercado a a estar el en un nivel como este en cantando en los lugares más importantes. His real music career began during this time while pursuing the course of audiovisual communication in college. After work in college, he would spend most of his time recording songs in this room by himself and would upload them on SoundCloud for the world to listen and he would come up with online strategies to have an even wider reach. He would upload songs under the name of Bad Bunny, which ultimately would become his stage name. The reason behind this name is due to one of his pictures from school, where he was dressed in a bunny suit and had an angry looking grumpy expression, and the name just clicked and people loved the vibe. As an independent artist on SoundCloud, he would spend hours working tirelessly to release hits after hits with songs such as Just Let Me Know, Get In, Tantacion, and Diles, which gave him lots of local attention. 
His online strategies to promote music seem to have worked, where his music eventually reached DJ Luian, who was already a well-known artist and had his own newly made record label called Hear This Music. Under the parent organization named RIMAS Entertainment LLC, where the music was distributed by Sony Music Latin. Specifically, his song Diles was what impressed DJ Luian, where he offered Bad Bunny a contract and signed him under the Hear This Music record label, and that's where it all changed. A fun fact is that Bad Bunny was the first ever artist actually signed by Hear This Music, where after that, the label went on to produce many a great artist, songs, and collaborations with mainstream singers like Becky G. This label gave Bad Bunny a manager named Noah Assad, who was also a co-founder in Remus Entertainment LLC. Noah advised to start posting videos on YouTube and would manage putting together music videos for Bad Bunny and also manage to book large tours. But this was just the beginning. His real rise to fame started just after the release of his song called Soy Peor, which labeled him as the predecessor of Latin trap music. The music video gained more and more views and today it has the potential of almost crossing a billion views. His other singles kept him in the top 10 Billboard Latin charts, and the next thing we know, Bad Bunny is collaborating with mainstream artists such as Cardi B, Jennifer Lopez, and Drake, which has made him go international, securing a number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. He is the first artist ever to have a single on number one Billboard chart with a language other than English. But the business side of the music industry came into play. Bad Bunny soon had to resign from Hear This Music, even though he gained all the success on that label. The reason was, Bad Bunny stated himself that the label was not allowing him to release an actual full-length album and was getting little to no creative help for his hit singles, and noticed that many workers in the label were unfairly taking percentages from the money that he earned through his hits. After resigning from the label, he joined the parent organization and was allowed to release an album in which he released 100 PRE, followed by his next album that was nominated for a Grammy and debuting on number 2 in Billboard 200, which is huge. But what really makes him stand out from all the other artists is that Bad Bunny is not just a typical artist who sings about parties and girls, but he makes more conscious music. His music includes messages dealing with social issues, where he has touched on the topics of domestic violence in the song Solo De Mi, and is well known for his support for LGBT and transgenders. Bad Bunny took part in a protest against Ricardo Rosello, a Puerto Rican governor who was exposed to being homophobic and secretly mocked the victims of Hurricane Maria. For his resignation, Bad Bunny decided to make a political song called Afilando Los Cuchillos, encouraging people to vote for the right person, unlike Ricardo. Apart from this, what really makes him stand out is the fact that Bad Bunny's fifth album broke multiple records, where the most notable of them was having more streams than any other artist ever on the same day of release of the album. Speaking of facts, Bad Bunny has more than 41 billion Spotify streams through his albums, surpassing The Weeknd, Ed Sheeran, and on his way to potentially surpassing Drake with a difference of just 6 million streams. Through Spotify alone, Bad Bunny makes more than $36 million, which is almost the same as Drake. And speaking on concerts, Bad Bunny makes $2.7 million per concert or show, which is more than Justin Bieber, Drake, and The Weeknd. With world tours, Bad Bunny brings in a total of $116 million, where mainstream artists like Cardi B, Drake, and The Weeknd are not anywhere near that figure. If you want to know how much it costs to feature Bad Bunny to collaborate with you, Bad Bunny charges up from $1 million to $1.5 million for a song, which is exactly the same as Drake, Justin Bieber, and insanely more expensive than artists like The Weeknd. When it comes to merch, Bad Bunny has pulled in more than $500,000 with his WWE merch and has become the best-selling merch in WWE today. To be fair, this can't be compared with brands of artists such as Ovo, Yeezy, or other clothing brands as business-wise because this can take time to progress with different niche. But Bad Bunny has great fashion sense and is talented enough in this field that he was hired by Adidas to design their official sneakers and clothes and gave him full creative control to do so. This brought out glow-in-the-dark Crocs, which made up huge profits for Adidas. Apart from music and having a clothing shop, Bad Bunny also has a side business, which is a luxurious restaurant in Miami called Gecko, which specializes in steaks and a combination of both American and Japanese foods, specifically steaks and sushi. His restaurant is in collaboration with David Grutman, who owns multiple restaurants and clubs in Miami and has great experience with running restaurant businesses. 
According to Grutman, Bad Bunny is a sushi fanatic, which is why he has always dreamed of opening a sushi restaurant. With ultimate success in the music world, Bad Bunny seems to be having promising success in his luxurious restaurant too, as it's fairly new with an expected benchmark of $100,000 revenue generation per month with his first 12 months. With no surprise, Bad Bunny also played the character of Kenny Payas in the successful Netflix series of Narcos, making his acting debut. An interesting fact is that Bad Bunny was a huge fan of the series and really wanted to play a role, so he decided to send in videotapes of his acting as an audition to Carlo Bernard, the screenwriter of the series. The talent team of the series was completely impressed by Bad Bunny's acting that they couldn't help but hire him for a role. But according to Bernard, he had faced challenges due to Bad Bunny's busy schedules of being a superstar and that clashed with the series schedule. With such incredible acting and already being a heavyweight superstar in the world of music, even the WWE caught the attention of hiring Bad Bunny for their events, where he managed to win a 24-7 world title. Bad Bunny is a man who has accomplished it all at such a young age, from music, acting, business, activism, fashion, wrestling, to breaking world records of already A-list artists. All of this at such a young age and not even speaking the mainstream language. Despite this language issue and being a Latin American, he is able to break barriers in the mainstream pop world, proving that you can start from nothing and build an empire of your own just by influencing yourself. The Melo Melo city of Vega Baja has finally produced a major artist for the world to remember.